first question was, you know, you've you've been in this job for less than a year. How's it gone? It, it kind of um, it kind of leads me to look to the future, look at 2022 and, and beyond. What what are your aspirations for for the company? And let's look in the international space um, for a second, and then I'll come back to you in a moment, and we'll 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 talk about the UK market. Sure. sure. So, what are your aspirations and, and hopes for Marlborough in 2022? Sure. I, I'd I'd have one objective, perhaps two, but but one objective is to be close to leading firms that we can support. If 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 we had a focus that that if you like if if behind Marlborough is capability of investments of governance of controls of of entrepreneurship etc. If if that's what Marlborough is about, how can we take that? to more advisory firms and practices and share our experiences and perhaps get connection. If there were a second, it's about reinforcing the relationships that we already have. So for me, it's about doing the right things, really enhancing and supporting the brand that we have. So doing the right things well, but then tell people about it, engage, be on our front foot, you know, so that that for me is is really important because I think we've got things to share. So why don't we do that? Really good answer. I like, I like that. That's a and there's been a few points today actually, um, a few nice user friendly sound bites that are out there that just just ring home through uh, across the board throughout life. You know, it's quite a simple industry. This really isn't it. It's about give good service, give good advice, and you know, and look after people. It's about yeah. relationships, isn't it? I think, I think you're exactly right. And the reality is there's more and more requirement for advice to be provided. You know, if you look in the international space, the number of advisors, you know, if you only go back five years to now, you know, the professionalism, the quality of the advisors now, the, the, the complexities of the marketplace, it just all leads to a requirement for bespoke and, and professional quality advice. But if the advisor does that, he or she wants to look back and say, okay, who's supporting me though? Let's make sure in the way that we've been able to undertake that review, we have partners that absolutely support us so we can deliver to the clients that we hold dear. So I, I think, yeah, I, I, it is a simple, you know, say what you do, deliver what you, you say you're gonna do, look after the client and deliver on your promises as I've said. So I think, you know, it is, but but sometimes we make it more complicated than it needs to be, perhaps, Gary. I think that that's something. Sometimes, as an industry, and myself as um, you know, being being part of the the media, being part of the industry in that respect, I sometimes overcomplicate questions. You know, when really it's a straightforward, you know, short question. We're always using acronyms. We're always using. Um, those in this industry, and we use a lot of jargon. I think it's important to get past that, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I th absolutely. Um, and I'm going to just use another acronym, though. But, <laughs> you know, in, in terms of, the, I, I think advisors are focused on centralised investment propositions, that's CIP. And if I may, I just sort of move that around in terms of, particularly in the in the in the markets that we've talked about internationally. And for me, it's about it's a compelling investment partner. Same CIP, but what we want is we want the investment to be absolutely first class. But from that investment, what we want is a partner that absolutely supports us. And if we do both of those things and we engage then with the market, it becomes compelling. So I think that for me, a CIP, where people talk about a centralised investment proposition, I now see it as a compelling investment partner and that's what I'd like to us to be and to be seen as as we go into the international market. Fantastic. Richard Goodall, thank you for your time today. I've got one final question um, for you, uh, just a short one. What do you do for fun outside of the industry? This is the big interview, so what, what do you do for fun that's not financial services? Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to still play some sport which I'm pleased about, but, but, my, but my tennis is a little bit slower than it used to be, 
Um, so a little bit of tennis, a little bit of swimming. I'm, I'm lucky enough to, um, to, to have a wife and a family, so that, that is important to me as well. You know, um, and it's interesting to balance that with with work, if that makes sense, with Zooms and with Teams calls, etc. But family is really important to me. You know, I, I, I live on the coast, so you know, walks and just being by the water, I really enjoy. Um, but also a little bit of sport as well. So all of those connected. You know, I, I'm pleased enough to be able to say that, you know, work's fun, but also outside of work, there's enough to keep me interested in and, and balance the two together. Richard Goodall, thanks for your time today. Thank you.